Hello, my name is Wumping. Welcome to my channel. This is a series of step-by-step -step CTF walkthrough for various VAR boxes that is suitable for beginners. Today, once again, I'm going to walk you through the process of hacking one of the most popular boxes from VARHUB, Cubetrix Level 1. Cubetrix Level 1 is widely regarded as one of the most popular boxes on VARHUB because it is very beginner-friendly. There are multiple ways to get root, so it makes the exploration even more fun. In the previous video, I have uh, went through one of the, the ways that is, uh, you can use to hack Cubetrix Level 1. We identify a vulnerable Samba version, and then we, we exploit it using a trans to open exploit that is, can be found on the Metasploit uh, framework itself. So, this time, we are going to use a different way of hacking it. So without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, I already started Cubetrix level 1 machine on my home lab. So let's just jump to a uh, Cardio Denuts. Alright, so like, like what we did in the previous videos, we should know where are we. So this is our IP address once again, and this is our subnet mask. All right, so so we we should we should first start by identifying where is Cube Treats, like what we did in the previous video. So over here we have one way to go. Let's say dot two dot zero slash thirty four. Okay, so let's identify where is Cube Treats level one, and here we go. We have it. It's on the dot two dot two zero five. The same as the previous uh, previous walkthrough. So now we can use a MBT scan to, to confirm this that this is indeed cube treats as, as you can see from the screen. So now what other services are there that we can try to uh, export this time if we are not using the Samba services? So we can do a sudo mmap once again to find out uh, what is the different services that's running on on this machine so apart from samba services previously we have seen that there are other services like ssh or http web server and all this uh the good thing about mmap is that it's able to not only scan the services if you put the dash sv the v uh, flag you are able to identify the version they will do some basic banner grabbing kind of uh, a test to identify the version that is running on the service port. So in this case, now we are very interested in uh, identifying uh, whether there's any vulnerabilities for the web server because it seems to be using a very old version of Apache server. So what can we do is that there is a, a tool called Nikto. It's uh, quite popular among uh, pen testers because it's able to run a, a series of checks to to identify whether there's any uh, known issues or like low hanging fruits so you can run nikto dash help like this to to see what what is kind of, what what do what does it do like the different kind of uh, flags that it supports like you don't want it to run ssl or you want it to to follow redirects and etc so there's many things that uh, nikto can do and it's quite a popular tool among pen testers all right so now we can try to run nikto on our host so basically we can just uh, do the message and this enter our our target over here and then we can just run it and you can see that it's performing a lot of different checks that is a uh, very uh, uh very, very comprehensive they are looking for for a different different type of like is doing like uh directory boot forcing to find out whether there's any uh, known directories like there's like directory indexing file there's a like, web server manual file and uh, etc so there's a lot of things that that uh, nikto is uh, doing in the background and then they are showing what they think is interesting to you so that you as the the person conducting the test you are the attacker you are the penetration tester you can make use of all this information to quickly start uh start your your assessment like it says that there's some php server a php backdoor file manager was found etc so so all these things it's up to you to go and uh, check whether are they valid or are they false positive or or see what you want to do 
But because of the fact that uh, time is of essence, be it doing, doing a penetration test or engagement or anything, it's your, your job as a as an attacker, a, a penetration tester to, to identify what is truly important, like what is the most interesting thing in this list of things. Alright, you have to choose something to focus on as the first thing to do so that you, you won't end up not having enough time to complete every single test. In this case, I can see that uh, the, the over here, something that, that really, really strikes is this. This uh, mod SSL version 2.8.4, mod SSL 2.8.7 and lower are vulnerable to a remote buffer overflow which may allow a remote shell. So this is something that we are interested in. So something that we learned in OSCP like I have mentioned previously, one is the determination in finding bugs and uh, knowing that that uh, not to give up and to keep trying and try harder and harder. All right. And another thing is the the ability to to use Google to find uh, known uh, vulnerabilities to find the exploit. Like if we find anything that is uh, having running a vulnerable version, we are able to find the exploit or to find out whether we can exploit it or not. So let's say we try to search for this, this version that it is running. As you can see, it's over here, it's running this. Uh, all right, so we can, we can simply go to uh, Google. All right, and we can just uh, search for this and uh, search for uh, we can do you see the the first link already show us the the exploit all right is is uh, an upgrade from this uh, original exploit is an upgrade uh, upgraded version so so you, see, you can see that the author also mentioned the original uh, is called uh, open something that is uh, not a very elegant name so he changed it to something more elegant and then the expert also mentioned about the the usage is is uh from this this was the source it was from uh 2003 uh, when it was being first submitted to the exploit database all right so so this this exploit does not work anymore okay so so that's why that's why we the, the this author is uh has created a new version so if you want to use the old as the 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 old exploit the original exploit you have to make some modifications which i i did uh, in in the past when i was uh working on this box for the first time so you can see that there are all the steps here and then uh you can see the reference, the, the author actually references to, to one of my, my blog, blog posts in the past. Because uh, previously when, when I did it, I, I actually used searchploit to look for the, the exploit from ExploitDB and then I, I made some modification to it. So in, in this walkthrough, let's just use this uh, new, new um, exploit, alright? That has been already fixed. So what you can do is uh, you can do a git clone over here, like like what is uh, being being shown. All right. So now you can actually um simply uh, go to any directory. So for for example, I like to go to slash all okay to to paste any uh git clone projects over here. So I can actually do this at git clone. All right. All right. I don't have the permission to do and all right <clears throat> so now i am i have this folder so i can actually uh do I have that here that okay i don't have that so it's fine i'll just beam yeah so you can see that the code has been uh, uh, downloaded uh from this uh repo all right so what you can do now you can just follow the steps here so you need to install this SSL um, library which you may or may not have it by default so let's try do I have it yes let's run it all right I need to run with sudo okay I have it I have it already I have the newest version and then it's time to compile it so you can use this uh, command to to compile the exploit 
So I probably need to do and then uh, it's not copying. Let's try again. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So it's it's been uh, compiled. Is is a uh, now I have the the program itself the the exploit. So dot slash you can run the run it and you can see that uh, there is many different uh, offset that is being supported in this case all right so you have to find out what is uh, your what is the the offset that your target could be using so how how do you find out about this information you you can um, refer to to what you have searched previously the, the you can run it again if you can remember it okay. Note that uh, what we are doing here is not the best practice uh, because uh, usually after you run the command once, you, you want to save the command. But in, in this case, I was using only one tab, so so I, I kind of, uh, I can't really scroll anymore. So, so in this case, it's, it's fine because I can, it's in my home lab, so I can be as noisy as I want. I can still run it again. So anyway, you can see that the Apache server Oh, it looks quite familiar i mean like uh oh so the the author of this repo they have already already um write it here red hat uh, linux using apache version 1.3.20 which is exactly in our case apache 1.3.20 so so they have already identified but we don't just blind run it we can we can also um double check and see whether it's correct so it's actually 0 x uh, 6a which is which is this guy over here 0 x 6a budget 1.3.20 to dash 16 so this seems to be the the, the right the right target all right so what else do we need we have to also uh, we have the target and then we can uh, specify the port and then what is dash c dash c is uh, the number of uh, connections so if we are not sure so we can just write 40 to 50 which uh, in this case i think it's fine we can just put 40 and let it let it run and try out see what what it does all right so we can copy this command exactly and okay so we have to specify to our target dot two dot two zero five so after we run this the expert will be executed on the target server so you have it runs a number of connections to try to uh exploit the buffer overflow uh, probabilities so as you can see from here it did not happen you see you you it says spawning shell but uh it says goodbye right after so it means that this doesn't work all right so maybe we can try try something else we can try with 45 and see if it works all right still the same still doesn't work dash what about 50 does it work spawning shell no it doesn't work so there's a possibility that the, the dash c is not valid otherwise it is probably because the, the shell code is uh, is wrong so maybe we should not be running the 0 x 6 a in this case all right so we can we can try it out we can try it out dot um, slash open and see what else is, what other options is there so apart from one and that's a two also so we can actually try zero at six b as well so we can how about we try zero at six b and uh connections we can stick to 40 and run it all right does it work oh wow you see it actually worked this time the exploit actually download uh another script from here and uh they run it so attach waiting for signal signal call shell code is being placed 
So now it's like waiting for SU ID shell. Okay. Um, is it finished running already? We can try. Oh yes, it's it's done. So so although it says now wait for SU ID shell, it's actually already executed. So this is the the reverse shell that is uh being spawned on the trees. So you are root now. I'm root. I'm root. So I can do with unit dash a and see that. See, I am now inside the cube treats machine as root. All right. With that, uh, we have come to an end of this uh, walkthrough. So thank you for watching. I hope this video is useful to you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.